thank you for coming. Lamed Chet 38, Likute Moran, part Zain, second paragraph. When the person is working hard to remind himself that he is holy, that he's got a soul, he's got a neshama, he reminds himself that even though that today it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, regular days of the week, still Shabbos does exist, even though that I find myself working and, and fighting and arguing and, and struggling, still I have a soul, my soul is shining from inside, even if you cannot recognize it always. If a person is doing that, so he pulls the purity of that holy day to the regular days of the week and he can feel Shabbos in the, in the, in the middle of the week. He can feel the soul even when he is busy in all of his regular things, even if he's working, he can feel that Hashem is with him. He's learning, he's walking, he's talking, and he feels certain purity hovers above him, inspiration, purpose in life. He, he feels dvekut, he feels connection. And it brings him to a certain shame that it's aspect of tshuva, he feels that he wants to come closer to the Creator and he wants to serve Him because he feels, um, he recognizes the good, he feels appreciation to the Creator. I'm working and you're helping me and, and you're doing so much things for me and I'm eating and I feel different taste in the food and feel connection, feel love, so you feel you want to do more for the Creator. In the beginning, he feels that feeling in his heart and then it brings him to, to prayer. In the beginning, you feel the will inside of your heart. You feel some love in your heart. You feel a desire in your heart. But the perfection of the will, the illumination of the will, is when you pray, is when you reveal your will through your mouth, means that you speak, means that you say to Hashem Edwarach, I love you. If now there's a relationship and the couple, he loves her and she loves him, and they were never going to say to each other, they, it, it, it's not so sure that they will know that they love each other. You need to say, I love you, I care about you, let me help you. Don't want, if you want to, so, so reveal it, show it, express it. So, in the beginning, the person, he feels that shame and that holy desire inside of his heart to want to do good things and to connect himself to the Creator. And it brings him to pray. It brings him to cry to Hashem and to reveal his heart, to tell him, look, how far I am, please give me goodwill, please purify me, bring me closer to you. So, it fixes the power of speech, an ikra regel, that calls a leg. Why it calls a leg? Because that's how you progress. Because with every word that you say in your Avodat Hashem, you make another step, you progress, you're getting closer and closer to the Creator. This is why the mouth calls a leg. The power of speech calls a leg. Because with the legs, you're progressing, you're walking forward, you're getting closer to the Creator. So a person in the beginning needs to fix the power of speech that calls a leg. And it calls the leg because the leg is the organ that a person has in his body that make him progress, make him make another step, another step, another step, getting closer to your purpose. And your mouth is going to bring you to your purpose. If you're going to pray on your will, you're going to achieve it. Because everyone that is lengthening his prayers, he will be answered. Rav Nathan said that if a person haven't achieved yet what that he wanted to achieve, it's only because that he haven't prayed enough. So the power of speech, that the power to bring you to your purpose, to achieve whatever you want to achieve. And how you're going to fix the power of speech? That you're going to remind yourself that there is a holy day even when you take care of your own business, that you're going to remind yourself that the Creator, He created the world, 
even though that you now need to work to find money, even though that you need to eat now to find life, to find chiyu, to find power inside of the food, God is the one that revives you. He's the one that gives you life and not the food. You're going to remind yourself in the beginning of the eating, in the beginning of the meal, Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. You are the creator of that fruit. You are the creator of that bread. You brought that bread out from the ground, from the land. You're the one that made everything. You're going to remind yourself and then you're going to eat. Even if your eating won't be so pure, you're not going to eat like Abraham Avinu, but still you're going to do your job. You're going to remind yourself in the beginning of the meal and you're going to remind yourself in the last blessing and the end of the meal. You're going to do your job. כי זוהמת הנחש גרם 39 קללות, 39 מלאכות, because the contamination of the snake caused us to 39 curses, 39 kinds of work. וצריך כל אדם להמשיך קדושת שבת, and every person needs to pull down the purity of Shabbos, of the seventh day, holy day, לקדש ימי החול, to purify, to cleanse the regular days of the week. By the purity of Shabbos, by the holiness of Shabbos, by reminding yourself in the regular days of the week that nothing is regular here, that this world is spiritual, that this, that world comes from heaven, that this world, even though that it seems to be physical, is very spiritual and very deep and very, very um, contains huge wisdom and a secret. Like that it's written in the Midrash that calls Mechilta in the Sif, in the, in the Mechilta, in the Brightot. Zachor et yom ha-Shabbat, that you need to, re to remember the seventh day. Zochreu me'echad be-Shabbat. Remind yourself that Shabbos is exist from the first day of the week. Immediately when you're about to lose Shabbos, what you do? Fourth meal. Immediately you remind, no, let's connect our Seudot and people used to eat food from Shabbos for the Seud Aravit, also from leftovers from Shabbos to pull the, the purity of Shabbos, like that we know that the light of Shabbos is illuminating and shining to all three first days of the week. And the light of Shabbos is shining, the next Shabbos is shining on the other three, on Friday, Thursday and Wednesday. And as much as you cleansing the regular days of the week, that's how much you're going to reject the contamination of the snake. So if you feel that you have that snake walking with you, if you feel that you're always hungry, that you're always tired, that you're always angry, that you're always afraid, that you're always lazy, that you always... A snake. So, <laughs> Rabbeinu gives you an advice. Remind yourself that you have a soul. Remind yourself that you have a center. Remind yourself that you have a heart. Remind yourself that you have Shabbos. <coughs> Remind yourself that you have the Creator. Remind yourself that you're not flesh and bones. Remind yourself that you're a spiritual being. Remind yourself you're a Jew. Remind yourself that you have your will. Remind yourself that you saw the super private supervision of the Creator. Remind yourself that you saw miracles. Remind yourself the righteous people. Remind yourself the Torah. Remind yourself Shabbos. Remind yourself Mikveh. Remind yourself all of those sparks, all of those candles that are illuminating your life, that are bringing light into your life. And remind yourself those things. Remind yourself, but I'm, okay, I'm in darkness, but inside that darkness I can walk with my tzitzit. Okay, I'm going inside darkness, but inside that darkness, thank God that Hashem gave me my beard and I have my pit oath. And thank God I'm, I'm about to keep Shabbos. In a few hours, it's going to be Shabbos. And only a few days, okay, so great. And I can bless on the food and I can say thank you to Hashem. I can do netilat yadayim. You know what it means to do netilat yadayim? You're changing the world with that netilat yadayim. You're changing the world. So just... We don't have those eyes to see those things, but in every mitzvah, everything that you do, you're purifying and you're changing the world. The world is not the same after that you made one mitzvah. When you made one mitzvah, you judged all of the world favorably, right? That's how you say that? Favorably. Yes, I'm learning slowly, slowly. Slowly, 
but surely. <laughs> slowly, though. So, slowly. But you're changing the world with your good will, with your prayers. And when you pray for Am Yisrael, and when you pray for the world, and when you pray for the salvation of the world, and you pray for the salvation of Hashem, of the Creator, that He's going to be happy, that He's going to be pleased, that He's going to have satisfaction from His children, that He's going to be known everywhere in the world, that everyone's going to know Him. You're changing the face of earth, you're changing, you're creating new sky and a new world, a new heaven, you change everything. You create a new sky and a new land. Because you're bringing down the illumination of Hashem, you bring down the light of Hashem. So then people are walking in the streets and they're looking at, at oaks, they're looking at trees, they're looking at flowers, and those flowers are shining in a different light from that day and on. You went in that street and you done it with the dude and you said, please Hashem, bring down your light. Hashem brought that light. You don't know, you don't see that, you keep on walking, but you don't know what you left behind. The sparks of faith, the light, someone else is going to come and it's going to be the first time that he's going to question, maybe Hashem is exist. Nah, you know, say, nah, drop your nonsense and going to walk away. But also that thought was only because of your Bodedut over there. And after a few days, he's he going to think about it again. Suddenly the private supervision of Hashem is going to bring him again to the, and gonna say, hey, what? all of the time I'm thinking about Hashem, what's going on? One of the people that were far from Hashem, the Pikosim, that w w was ca coming to the classes of Rabbi Nakadosh, of Rabbi Nachman, in Breslev. So he said, I feel every time they made an oath not to mention the name of Hashem in Barach in their mouths. They said, We don't want to believe. They, that's, they were so strict. And he said, Every time that I'm coming to Rabbi Nachman's classes, I feel like someone is, is pulling me for my coat and tells me, there is God, yesh Elohim, yesh Elohim, there is God, there is God. Why? Because Rabbeinu believed so much that you could see on him that there is God, that there is. And when you believe, you bring down that bounty to all of your family, to all of your friends, to all of your neighbors, to your neighborhood, to your city, to your land. And everyone going to see you and going to believe in Hashem because of you. And you need to believe in yourself that it's the kindness of Hashem, that Hashem is so mercy that He can change the world. It's not me. Who am I? I'm always going to be just one drop in the sea of soul. I will always going to be one soul. But from that soul, Hashem can do whatever He wants. Hashem can change the world. Rabbi Milubavitch would give every person that would come to Him one dollar bill. One dollar bill. He would give him one dollar bill. What, you can buy a house with a dollar bill? Yes, if you believe in the Rebbe. If you believe in the Rebbe, you believe that you're going to buy the building with that dollar bill. Yes, because you have faith in that dollar bill. You have faith in the Rebbe that gave you the blessing inside that dollar. One dollar, four shekels, what can I do with it? 3.8, what can I do with it? I don't have nothing. To... cannot buy candies to my children with that dollar bill. That's what you got from the Rebbe, a dollar bill. Depends on your faith. I, well, I wouldn't interrupt Chas Shalom, but uh, the story I saw, I read, I heard it a bunch of times. I think it was either uh, Gilad Shalit, the one who was captured by Hamas, by the Hamas, and they after he was captured for a couple of years. What happened was, if I'm I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure that it was either his it was his father, I think. But it could be it was his mother. They went to Rabbi Mechabad. They were in America. And he gave them a, a dollar bill. And the story was said over when somebody came to, um, what's it called, to, to visit them after he came home. And the mother said the story there, that they got a dollar bill. And on the dollar bill, the exact date that Gilad Shalit was freed was on the dollar bill. The so I wasn't. I'm not sure if something was written or the actual the numbers were exact date and year. Mom, the exact day that he was freed from jail. A dollar that Rabbi gave. Amazing. Yeah. I think about the years. I don't think it can be Gilad Shalit because of the years, but uh, maybe. It what do you mean? It was 20 years. It, who knows? The Rabbi Mechabad gave a dollar bill. Gilad Shalit. Yeah. 
It was before. Oh, he, oh, he gave the parents. He gave the, the parents dollar. a dollar bill. This was before, way years, before, years before. 20, 30, 25 years before, and the dollar bill had the exact date as he was when he was freed. That day, the dollar bill, Most and they didn't realize until that day. And she, and she kept the dollar bill because everybody keeps the dollar bill. And she looked and she was astonished, though. How much are you gonna pay for that dollar bill? <laughs> to be free from the terrorists. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It all depends on the faith that you have in the Rebbe. It all depends on the faith that you have in the spiritual powers of the Rebbe, in the spiritual power of your soul. You can believe in yourself and you're also going to go and bring salvation to Am Yisrael. Why do you think that the Rebbe, Rabbi Milubavich, he born as a regular person and every Chabadnik that's going to tell me, no, you don't know the Rebbe, I will argue with each and every one of them. I will argue with each and every one of the people that are going to claim and going to say that the righteous people received their purity and their spiritual powers as a gift from Hashem. No way. Only corresponding to the effort that they put in the Avodat Hashem, how much that they sacrificed, how many nights they haven't slept, how many nights they were praying and crying to Hashem Barach and were not eating and, and hoping and yearning and, and fighting and, 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 and sacrificing. Only corresponding to that, according to the effort, the reward you achieve. So the people that achieved a lot of things in their lives, it's only because that they sacrificed and they gave a lot. So if you're going to do the same, you're going to achieve the same. And you have the power, you have the potential, you have the soul inside of you, just you need to listen to it. You need to listen to yourself. You need to develop that self-awareness. You need to listen to your inner voices and to count on the hints and the signs that God gives you in your life. If God tells you, count on that person, you need to count on him. And if God puts someone in your life that tells you that you need to do something and you listen to him and you say, hey, God, hint me on that person. He was talking to my heart. You need to count on that. If God show you a certain path that you need to go to Eretz Israel, to whatever, to work in a certain job, to do something, to work on your hobbies, to play music, I don't know what. You need to count on that. You need to follow those signs. And if you're not going to follow, if you're not going to believe in yourself, you're going to lose yourself. You're going to lose your connection to your soul. You will gonna, you're going to forget how your inner voices sounds like, and you're not going to recognize them when they're going to call you. So you have to work on your skills, you have to work on your awareness, you need to observe, to look inside, to check what's going on, what do I want, what I don't want, what makes me happy, what makes me sad, what doesn't seem logic to me, what I feel like that's the best thing, best gift in the world, what I want to do, what Hashem is illuminating from inside, what Hashem is hinting me, and to keep on marching, keep on marching to Zion. That's that journey to Eretz Israel, journey of purity, to find your soul, Yerushalayim Ashalem, to work on your fear from heaven, to work on your faith, to achieve com shlemut, complete, how you said that? Complete, completion? Perfection. Completion. <laughs> Perfection. Perfection in Avodat Hashem, to believe in Hashem Yitvarach in a perfect way, in 100%. That's when you're going to find real Jerusalem. That's when you're going to find the real Yerushalayim, the Titzir Ashalem. Thank you very much. Chazak Hey, what's up guys? It's Obi from the Amunah channel here in Jerusalem. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to Rav Dror. So show me some love. Show Rav Dror some love. Subscribe to the channel. We post new videos almost every single day. Awesome classes like this. If you have any questions on the classes you just watched or just other questions that you have or comments that you want to tell us, post them in the comments below. And we do a question answer session every single week. So we'll either answer your question in that on video or we'll make sure to get you an answer. And of course, check out immunachannel.com. Awesome website where we have tons more inspirational content. We have videos, blogs, music, and all sorts of cool stuff. So get involved over there at immunachannel.com and we'll see you in the comments.